Hey everybody, I thought I'd give uh, an impromptu talk, but apparently I'm not doing a very good job of this because this is like eight or nine takes in, <laughs> on talismans and how to use Enochian to make talismans. So I'm going to talk first about the general idea of talismans, try to like get you thinking about some of the considerations that you would want to have when you're doing that, making a talisman. And then um, finally, I'll just give some general updates about uh, how to do that. But I will, I've been trying to keep it brief, but maybe that just won't be the case. So, oh well, right? So I've, I've tried in the, some of the previous takes to try to make sense of it, but I think what is going to be easier is if I just use my example and then talk about the different um, things that um, and, and talk about variations on that. So as you think about it, uh, then you can have a good, you know, a good sense of how to get started and, and work with that. All right. So all of that being said, um, so I decided to do a talisman today uh, associated with a fixed star. So a fixed star is just a fancy term for the word star. Why do they use that? Because astrologers distinguish between planets which in the Greek had derived their name from wandering star uh, to, uh, to distinguish the planets from actual stars, balls of gas that have nuclear fusion, and that's how we get light from them. Okay, so why would I do a talisman for that? So what is a talisman? Let me back up to that. Talisman is anything with magical power. In particular, when somebody says they're going to make a talisman, they're saying I'm going to take a material and that, that I'm, I'm going to make it magical via whatever process that is. And in so doing, I'm going to capture that magic in that object. That's the whole idea, right? And is it is this oversimplifying? Probably. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> um, so I decided I wanted uh, to capture the energies of that fixed star speaker. Why? Because it generally brings good things. Spika is associated with just generally a lot of blessings, and it's associated specifically with the harvest. So you're harvesting really good energy, and that's the whole idea there. So bear in mind that if you haven't been living a good life or you're not thinking about paying it forward, stuff like that, that will be tend to be the downside of, of the, this fixed star if you wanted to go about doing that. So um, I found this election, and I have one other election for Spica, uh, that is not until 2028, so if you want to realize how far ahead you got it, kind of got to be thinking, this is one of those deals. And I was looking at another election that I had for a fixed star Alfeca, and there was something that I didn't like about it, A-L-P-H-E-C-C-A or E-K-K-A, -A, depending on how you spell it. I looked at it again, I said, eh, I'm not doing that this year, so that also is probably pushed out till 28. So it just lets you know how to do that. So, okay, let me back up and I'll explain why I pushed out those two things, or why, why I have those two dates in mind. So a fixed star, when you're looking at it astrologically, you are looking at what's known as the angle. So I'm just going to keep it brief and stick with the ascendant, which is basically the roughly speaking, the eastern horizon, right? And what star, as the Earth is making its rotation, what star is coming up over what's known as the ecliptic, which is the apparent path of the sun around the Earth. And that general circle around the Earth is what's known as the ecliptic, and where it hits that eastern horizon, that is where you can, uh, uh, you know, roughly speaking in the east, where the sun would rise. That is gen that's what's known as the ecliptic. And then, you know, you have a little bit of declination or are you looking north or south of that, whatever the case may be. But generally, that whole circle and then a bunch of orange wedges, you can think of about it like that to get blocks of however many degrees, 30 degrees, 10, whatever. So re regardless of that, you know, if you can imagine like a, like a lemon wedge coming out at you, and this would be the ecliptic, a fixed star, even though the whole thing would be rotating like that, that fixed wedge, of, orange wedge of space, the fixed star would either be north of, or south of that, but the whole thing would still make that circle. Okay, enough of that. So I'm thinking about, I want that fixed star on the horizon. Now, why? 
because that is where, that is known as a sensitive point, a very important point. We look to that point to say, okay, that start that point at that eastern horizon, that's where there's a whole lot of importance. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of sensitivity right at that point. That point is known as the beginning of things, and usually it's like uh, if you're if you're not off to a great start, that's usually a bad thing. We want things to start off at a good start. And usually it's like a, a somebody who's, um, let's say, a sprinter, right? And if they get off to a great start, they, they push off just as the gun goes off, so to speak, or the timer or whatever, then, aha, then they're going to, if they don't get off to a good start, you have to make up that much time, you know, duh. And all things being equal, you want to be off to the good start or whatever the case may be. So that's the implication there, is that if I time something so that that fixed star is right on the ascendant, then all of a sudden there's there's a, because the fixed star brings with it good things, then I'm saying I want that good thing to be right there at the beginning, you see, a good start. Now what you don't want is a bad star right there, right? So anyway, that's the whole idea. That's the whole theory behind it. So... Okay, so, but where is Alfeca, right? Where is this thing? Or, excuse me, Spica. Uh, that is in the zodiacal signs. So remember I talked about, like, these orange wedges. You can think of it like, you know, space. If, if, if I'm the Earth and then I extend out into space, like, this roughly 30 degrees, that, you know, that's how the entire 360 degree zodiac is split up, right? So... We're doing that, so if anybody, now that should be give you a clue that, um, or rather, there are different ways to split this up. I follow something that's known as the tropical system. Don't worry about that, but large in large part, just know that, you know, I'm picking a specific 30 degree orange wedge of space that you could extend out infinitely, but it would still only be 1 12th, right, of the universe. So the, that fixed star, if I'm looking out at this apparent motion of the Earth and I'm taking that 30 degree wedge, uh, uh, Spica is in one of those. And specifically, it's in the 30 degree wedge known as Libra. So the sign of Libra is where it is tropically. And I think it's, uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I know it's, it's uh, in the... Um, in a different system, the sidereal system, it's in the sign of Virgo. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Point is, I'm a Western astrologer who uses the tropical zodiac, and that's where it is. So already I know, because it's in that sign of Libra, that the I know a correspondence that I, with that. I know a set of correspondences. So you could look up in a correspondence book of your choice. You could use look up Stephen Skinner's tables. You could look up uh, Libra 777, you could look up Libra 776 and a half, um, but somebody who has a good set of correspondence tables that you trust, or you could look up Agrippa. Agrippa has since influenced a whole bunch of people in the Western magical tradition, and I'm speaking very generally, so don't, don't come, up, come, come at me in the comments. Um, so, so what is Libra associated with? Well, you could say it's associated with, uh, or Venus in particular, which rules Libra. It's associated with roses and a whole bunch of other nice things. But in particular, it's associated with, uh, Venus is associated with harmony. So Venus rules the sign of Libra, and it's associated with harmony and with uniting and with pleasantness and pleasant things and all of that and pleasure, pleasurable things, like eating a nice scoop of ice cream, all of that, and other pleasurable things. So, but that's that's sort of like the, the effects that we have, right? And it's nice that that fixed star is also there. It used to be due to this thing known as the wobble of the Earth that is called the precession of the equinoxes. Or not precession, the precession of the, well, it is, but... The precession of the Earth, basically the Earth's tilt is, a, is at a wobble, and every 26,000 years, it, anyway, that's a whole thing. It, make, it completes a full rotation. Um, I hope to be there when, I get, when it finishes its first one. <laughs> um, okay, so 
so Venus is associated with a whole bunch of things generally, and it's also currently associated with that fixed star. So we have two good things, right? We have Venus and we have that fixed star that gives us good things. Now, obviously too much of any good thing can be a bad thing or not going about it in an intelligent way. But largely speaking, this is something that, assuming you're intelligent and wise about that, this, is, this would be something to take advantage of. Now, let me talk a little bit about less of the abstract things and more of the concrete things that Venus is associated with. Roses would be a concrete thing. You can, we have roses outside our house. You know, if you could find a rose, you know, somewhere in a garden, obviously people buy and sell roses, all of that, you know. Um, and copper is another one that I'm just going to focus on for the purposes of this because you can't make a talisman out of a rose easily, <laughs> but you can out of copper. So I went ahead and bought copper. Now, do you need copper? No, you could use something, you could use paper, for example, and write whatever correspondences that are there. Paper is a relatively cheap alternative. And, you know, I get that there are people who are much more about like, no, just have it be this don't have it me do something physical. Why do I have to make stuff? Blah, blah, blah. I get that. Okay. But the truth is you appreciate and you learn and your, your consciousness is driven differently if you are making your body go through the process of making something physically. Okay. Just how it is. It's not all just in your head because your head isn't just, your, your head isn't just th this, this, this system of like taking in sensory data and then having ideas. Your head is also what your body does every day and the routines you go through, okay? It's just what it is. So adding in something additional to that, I'm just making the case generally about why, why do I have to do all these fancy things when I'm doing the LBRP? You know, what, why do I have to do it? Just do it, dude. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Just do it. Okay, so, so let me talk a little bit about, so I've talked about the why and the what, so for me, I went ahead and used copper. So this is a nice sheet of copper. Was it expensive? It was, it was not expensive. It was, was it inexpensive? Relatively. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? Um, but it was, it was, it's an investment just like anything else. So, okay. So I, obviously I used copper. Copper corresponds with Venus. If I were to go through the rest of those, Saturn, the planet Saturn is associated with lead. Don't use lead. It's toxic. Just don't do it. <laughs> um, use something else. Okay, use another metal. I will tend to substitute silver, obviously way smaller than this bad boy. Um, and, you know, Jupiter with tin, Mars with iron. Iron is going to be harder to work with, obviously. You get the idea. So, and the, and so on and so forth. So, so that's already, I'm, I'm sort of embedding in my mind. I'm saying, okay, copper, Venus, Venus rules Libra. Libra is where I want this fixed star. You see a pattern here, right? I'm throwing everything together that makes sense to go into this recipe, and I'm not including anything that doesn't, okay? All right. So now get let's get into the Enochian of this. So I have this, or let me let me back up one more thing. So I have this thing. So in addition to the circumstances about where I'm taking advantage of the time, the circumstance of time, because the moon happened to be on the ascendant at the same time I did this, as was the fixed star, and there's a special extra energy and juice that you get with that. Um Let's talk about, uh, and then what I did with that is I had a whole bunch of additional associations that I wrote on the other side of this that I'll show you in a second as part of the big reveal. All right, so, so obviously the next step in consideration is what, so I have this idea, I have the material that I planned for in advance, and I have the timing that I planned for in advance. And addition, additionally, I have the beings that I want associated with that. Could I have done something else? Probably. I could have probably tried to, to charge this myself, and it probably would have worked pretty well. 
but I'm an Enochian magician. I would rather take advantage of these wonderful entities that God has shown us and that are working with us and just basically work in a pretty cooperative manner because why should I do it all myself, right? Why, why should I be a team of one? Let me be a team of part of this team of a whole bunch of folks, a whole bunch of people, you, you in particular, but also the angels themselves, right? And they're there to help us, okay? At least that's the paradigm I'm working under. You may disagree. You know, your mileage may vary. Okay, so the angels. So this means that I have to do the usual. I have to activate the furniture. I have to, um, generally speaking, in order for the angels to want to work with me, I have to try to be a good person, try to live, uh, you know, a just and moral life, all of that. And this is what I aspire to do. Of course, I fall short. Thankfully, God's grace. You get the idea. All right. So then, you know, finally, now that we're talking about that. So the key point is that um, I'm working with them. And how am I working with them? When I go ahead and do the conjuration, I ask angels, please, please won't you charge this talisman, right? So that's what I do. I say, I, I, plan, I plan a design that I'm going to draw on the other side of this. I plan to already have the furniture active and ready to go. And there are different ways you could go about it. You could, you know, do all of the calls and all of that. What I did is I, um, I had done most of the design and then I kept the last part to make this truly have been birthed into the world by, um, by uh, by just leaving something incomplete and then completing it at the exact moment that I want all that stuff to happen on the horizon. This is East, by the way. <laughs> um, all right. So so because it's Enochian, you know, and I specifically use the Heptarchy, then that means that I'm not using the Watchtower tablets, which would be calls one uh, three through sixteen. I'm not doing Aether or three through eighteen. Excuse me. I'm not doing the Aethers, so I'm not using calls 19 through 48. Instead, I am using uh, just calls 1 and 2, which is pretty nice, right? And those are relatively short calls, and so it doesn't take that long to do it. So just to recap, think about when, plan when, think about what star, what would you want, all of that. Um, think about, and by the way, you can use negative fixed stars. You just have to word the things appropriately to make it serve as an amulet to protect you from bad things. I didn't need to do that this time. I'm using something for good. All right. So, okay. So, moving forward uh, with the description about what I actually do. So what I then do is I will, what I, what I do is I plan a design. Now, what kind of design can you do? There's a lot of stuff you can do. I mean, this is um, this is what I did. This is uh, the the half that I did um, before I uh, was as into Enochian. I was doing a lot more mixing and matching, and even this current design that is on the opposite side of this one, I used uh, different stuff. Oops, I think I have this upside down. Oh well, um, yeah, because that has Venus on top. So. So I have this design and you can see little elements here, right? Like this is associated with Venus. As this, these whole things are, this is the um, Arbatel spirit uh, Hagif, and, or the seal for him, uh, this, or for them, for her, I should say. And this is the, this is also associated with the appropriate angels. So there's a lot of like symbols here. Where did I get those symbols from? I got them from Agrippa. <laughs> So the three book, books of occult philosophy is what you want. There's stuff online. I want to say Esoteric Archives, Joseph Peterson's uh, website. He's He's got a lot of that stuff there. You can get Eric Perdue's version. It's it's a wonderful version. Um, but I mean, or at least it, it has a very good reputation. I had it for a hot second and then, you know, circumstances took it away. That's fine. I'll get another copy. It's no big deal. All right. So... Um, so you put, so what do you write on there, right? I already showed you a bunch. I kind of gave it away. But you have a whole bunch of writing on there that is associated with 
um, with what you want to bring forward. So uh, obviously I mentioned that I had the, the planetary symbol for Venus. Venus rules Libra. You can see the whole idea here. I'm just putting in a bunch of things that make sense to me, right? And that are basically there from all of the from all of the correspondences. So this version it looks like I didn't have Enochian. I was still doing a lot of Hebrew versions, but that would tell me that if I would look for this close enough. Oh, I did have a little bit of Enochian on there. It looks like. Um, yeah. So so anyway. So that's what I did then. But you come up with some kind of design, right? What would the design be? You throw in certain symbols from, let's say, Agrippa, or from like this classical stuff that are associated with the angels. Angels have said this and that. The Olympic spirits have said this and that. This is my seal, blah, blah, blah. Put that in there. Put down the names, okay? So these are all things that I would do and that I did. Um, next thing I would say is... Um, when it came to the current design, I wound up just reusing the uh, main design of the Sigillum de Ameth, but I just changed what was in there. Uh, not radically, um, but because there's a lot of stuff from it that I borrowed, but I also added in um, some names from, let's say, the Holy Table, for example. So now let's get into the Enochian of this. So the Enochian of this is, I included the king over uh, Venus the, in the hept Heptarchy, the one associated with Venus, which is King Baligon, and his prince, um, king, uh, Prince Bag Baganol. And I also um, included the six ministers of, that are associated with them, as well as the five governors. So I had a lot to put in there. I also brought in the zodiacal angelic king Alpidus, who is the king over Libra. And I also threw a few more things in there. So I threw in um, the angels of light associated with Venus. So there were a bunch of those. And I also threw in, so all of those, as well as the archangel, uh, Haniel, and um, I also, you know, threw in Galva. When I say throw in, I didn't, you know, I just, in terms of the design, I put in their names and stuff like that. And I also, on um, the outer circumference, I put in one of the names of God. I, I chose uh, uh, Jadojas, which is um, e the eternal God or eternal God. So obviously I would like the good things to last a long time. Okay, so how then so let me just go ahead and do a quick reveal oh yeah so before i before i do the reveal um Spica is one of 15 stars known as the bahanian stars b-e-h-e-n-i-a-n very important stars that just since antiquity they've been pretty considered pretty important so then i created a, a design so i'll show you the paper version here and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, but you can see some of these things I just left oriented, other stuff I changed the orientation, but you can see here, uh, Baligon, Baganol, etc., And then all the way up here to Binagol, right? So that would be in the outer uh, heptagram. And I just went ahead and did that. Like I said, I just copied the design. But then, and if you're familiar with the rest of these, you can look those up. But then in the very middle, inside that um, pentagram, I put in this Bahanian symbol for um, the fixed star Spica. And then right up top there, just as part of that top part of that pentagram, I put in the symbol for the moon, just at an angle, right? Pretty cool. And I had it um, facing upwards, not because the moon faces up or down or anything, but because it, it symbolically it felt like, okay, I should collect this. And this specifically, I should say the angels told me to put that in. And then when I saw the orientation, it made sense. Okay, yeah, I should, I should have that. God is bringing down his mercies and it's collecting almost, right? So that's the, that's the idea behind it. So to recap then, and I actually had more than one of these, uh, talismans that I did. I had intended to do more, but I got tired. 
and I got tired because I'm still recovering from shingles. And it's it's just going to be another week of half days, um, just because I just I just can't do it. I'm tired. <laughs> So, oh well, I'm a human being, right? Human beings get sick and uh, it's humbling. It's humbling when that happens. Okay, one other thing that I, I should mention that I added is I also added in uh, Enochian angels all associated with Mercury. Why Mercury? Because this is kind of like has to do with the astrology of it, but basically the ruler of the ascendant Venus is not in the sign of Venus right now. If it were, that would be really awesome, but it wasn't. It was in. It's currently in the sign of Gemini. It may have just uh, ingressed into Cancer, but regardless, um, at the time it was in Gemini and it was in a trine to the Moon, and the Moon is still making a trine to it. So what that means is that um, the ruler is in another sign, the sign of Gemini. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So I threw in all of the mercurial children of light, sons of light, daughters of light, etc. And I threw in the um, zodiacal king Hononol, who's associated with Gemini. And I threw in, um, again, I just added to the design and I requested them. And the main thing is to make sure that it's all, and so I, I wound up running out of time, getting close to it. So I took some shortcuts and I just asked generally that those angels would charge the talisman. And because I called on Karmara, who's like the king over these heptarchical angels, including the king of uh, over um, Venus, and because those two have been associated with each other, you know, the assumption there is that Karmara would then instruct him to do that and to King Baligon to do that. All right. So this is what it turned out as. So this one will not be for me. Uh, I was only able to complete one. I had intended to complete multiple ones, but it's okay. And so this is what it looks like. So um, this is a six inch by six inch. And so for those of you wondering like, okay, do I have to get a big square of mercury, of, uh, of copper rather? The answer is no. Um, I was able to fit this. So if you've ever made the, the Sigillum Day Ameth, it's, it's, uh, it's work. But if you've ever made the mini Sigillum Day Ameth, you know that just getting the geometry right in there is uh, difficult. And if you've ever add, actually added in the letters and numbers, that's even harder, but it can be done. Just don't expect it to be done perfectly. So anyway, I went ahead and, um, and I was able to do it here. And you can kind of see that even though this is only a three by three, I was able to get the letters in there. Is it perfect? No. So this one is actually on the back of the previous one that I have. So I have a lot of pretty good energy from that fixed star here because I have both the Venus, which rules it, but I also have the moon on that. So um, I, th I haven't really been taking advantage of this stuff that much, but I intend to, to change that and try to um, get a lot more of that good energy and those good vibes going. This one is going to a relative. So unfortunately, I, I don't make, I don't mass produce these. Um, I will make them as I can go. There are other magicians who are pretty, who I would trust and recommend. Um, one of those being, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll just refer you to the, to Astro Magia and to other, other Astro magicians. There aren't many. There's also, um, oh, let me think of her name. I'll put her, I'll put her name in the, in the, comments uh, or in the in the description once I find her. Nina Griffin, that's it. Nina Griffin is pretty, she knows what she's doing. Uh, Andrew B. Watt is another good one. Um, J.D. Kelly, I would also recommend. So these are these are pretty good uh, magicians to go with. So um, now do I do I just leave it at copper? You could also add in um, emeralds, you know, for example, I bought some rough emeralds. I may add those in. As far as I'm concerned, that would be like putting clothing on this. So there's this whole idea in astrology about inception or the, the giving birth to something. So that would be like that last moment that the talisman is done. That's what I would have going on here. I would like add this in. And then I consider like, even though there's additional um, uh, things that I would be doing, like putting on emeralds, I would consider that to be more like clothing. But you can do all of that, right? So, so that's my general talk on 
talismans. If you have any questions, so the main thing you do when you get to that point in the in the ritual, right? You know, what I my approach is, now not everybody does this, by the way. Some people say, well, I started it at this time and therefore that's when I gave birth to it. And that is not my approach. My approach is when I finish it, then I have I have literally given birth to this thing. It's like if you if you know if you know if somebody if a woman is giving birth to a child, is the birth complete once you know is the child in the world? No, the birth is complete once that last toe is out, right? If you still got your arm in there or whatever, you know that you're not you're not out out, <laughs> right? It seems it seems self-explanatory, but that's conceptually the way I go. All right. So when it comes to the ritual, basically you do the conjuration. You can use Scott Stenwick's Mastering the Mystical, he Mystical Heptarchy, very usable. <clears throat> As with any author, I do recommend checking their stuff against the original sources. I'll put the original sources in the description. So, um, but his conjurations are very good. And you just, the thing is you're, you're calling him forward saying, you know, using, you do the calls one and two, you know, King calls one and two. Use, let's say, Scott Stenwick's call as an example. And then once you have called them forward, you ask him for something. <laughs> hey, you got me on the phone. What do you want? Oh, could you please do this? Yeah, sure. That's how it is. All right. So is there anything else I'm forgetting? I don't think so. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Finally, uh, let's say you decide that you're unhappy with the talisman. What do you do? You can break it. You can destroy it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do that with these because I'm very comfortable with how good I am at making talismans now. But there was one that was earlier that earlier this year I broke because I was just like, something's not right about this. It has always felt wrong. And I tried changing it. I tried, it's like, just, just, just destroy it, dude. Start over. You're human. You make mistakes. Be done with it. So that's what I did. Um, okay. Uh, so this is just my approach to using Enochian for talismans. So you call forward the angels and then you ask, please charge this talisman. And then as the final thing, I compl I then complete the design. And that's what I do. I completed it. And now it's, now it is done. It is in the world complete, in, compl in its complete form. And then how would you go about using it? I could carry it around for something general. Um, that's probably what I'll be doing. I'll probably be making contact with it like I am now. So I wouldn't be surprised if because I have this talisman in my hand at the time that I uh, submit it, that suddenly, you know, it has more um, more good things coming from it. Let's put it that way. All right. So what would that be? If if your if your criterion for success is views, maybe it has more views. I don't know. But maybe instead it goes it gets to the right people. So yeah. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. A little, uh, now this, now I'm moving on to the update about me. I'm still recovering from shingles. Uh, I'm still having some pain occasionally. It hasn't been that bad. The main thing is fatigue. So um, I kind of had to push, push a little hard today. Uh, yesterday I was able to spread some mulch and water and that was probably pushing it a little too much. Um, today I did not have the energy to do that, but I did push enough to be able to make uh, these talismans. I had I had goals. I had a plan to make uh, five of these and instead I could make two before I ran out of time and I just had to do the calls and make the conjurations and request the angels to charge it. And that's what I do. I literally just said, please charge these talismans, these two talismans. Okay, you know, you, you wanted to do more and you could you did what you could. That's kind of life, right? And that's how I looked at it. Um, okay, so if you have any questions about this or anything else, um, why the Sigillum Day Ameth? Why did I use that design? Because it's already kind of got God's literal seal of approval on it, so it's it's okay to use it, in my view. Um, and I definitely didn't hear back from the angels, don't do that, no, save it for, no, they were fine with it. Um, okay, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of the, the kind words of support. Um, and, uh, I've been, uh, just taking the pointers in the comments. Um, I think I'm just going to be one of those people who's a longer time to recover person, you know, when it comes to this. Um, luckily for me, it hasn't been too painful. I'm, a, I'm towards the end of the third week and this can last anywhere from two to five weeks. 
Um, I have a feeling that um, right now Mars is on my sun, which is my chart ruler. So um, basically, uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, once once it gets past uh, the the sun, my sun, my moon, which I was on the new moon, so it will happen shortly thereafter. And then Chiron, once all that's done, the illness will probably abate. But until then, oh, well, I'll just be smart, not push myself too much, right? Um, okay. So thank you all so much for watching and good luck. And just like I said, if you have any questions, you can either reach out in the comments or through my website, which is enochian.today. And again, thank you all so much for your kind words of support. All right. Bye. Oh, wait. I've got a, I've got a clicker now. <laughs> oh, come on. Click. <laughs>